Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. Our next conversation here will be about the salaries of federal lawmakers. Um, a few days ago, um, chairman of the MBA section on Monday, Ubani wrote to uh, the government asking for enforcement of, you know, the judgments that was reached, you know, asking that the federal lawmakers have no right to actually determine their salaries. Uh, Mr. Monday Ubani, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. Good morning. I remember Thank speaking you. to you a few weeks ago, congratulating you on this landmark victory um, that you secured in the courts. Um, so now you're writing for, for enforcement. Tell us about that. Yes, uh, after the judgment was delivered, uh, which was clearly in favor uh, of my request that uh, the court should determine who actually fixes uh, the salaries and allowances of the lawmakers. And the court held that is only the revenue mobilization uh, and fiscal commission that's supposed to do all that. Uh, so I now collected the judgment, a certified two copy of it after the Juzun uh, strike uh, was over. And then I have now uh, certified the judgment and I did a letter to the Attorney General of the Federation in order to ensure compliance. I also wrote uh, to the Revenue Mobilization Allocation uh, Commission. I also wrote to the uh, Federal House of Representatives uh, to the Senate uh, of, of, of National Assembly. So I wrote to all of them, uh, bringing uh, the judgment of the court to their knowledge and also uh, asking that the judgment of the court will be complied with. Of course, you remember that the judgment said that the revenue mobilization should now begin to fix salaries and allowances of uh, national lawmakers in accordance uh, with the economic reality in Nigeria. So. I want them to actually comply with the judgment of the court. That is uh, the purpose of writing that letter that I said. Okay, so when you when you say uh, you know the the ruling says they should now start, does this mean that it this wasn't what the law has stated in the past, and uh, the ruling has now declared that they the uh, revenue mobilization, uh, mobilization and fiscal uh, commission should now officially start to fix salaries of federal lawmakers, um, and then also. How much money would you say has been paid illegally uh, to these lawmakers in, you know, the last two decades? Yes, uh, you know, the position of things uh, has been that uh, the salaries and allowances of the lawmakers has always been very secret. Uh, but from the grapevine, we keep on hearing this information that they have been paid uh, so much uh, money, you know, by way of jumbo pay uh, in their salaries and allowances. They were not ready to make it open. Uh, uh, over time, and then uh, until one senator, Sani, uh, who happens to be a, a senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, came up with the information that they collect uh, monthly 13 million naira, and then 200 million uh, by way of constituency projects. You know, so when that became public knowledge, I felt totally agree uh, that this is not uh, right in a country where people cannot afford one square meal a day. Of course, we are still struggling with the issue of paying 30,000 naira as monthly salary to civil servants. Meanwhile, uh, a set of people in Nigeria will be collecting 13 million naira monthly as by way of salaries and allowances. So I needed uh, this uh, to be clarified uh, from the court. Now, there was this conflicting information coming out uh, from the revenue mobilization who went asked whether they were the one that fixed those salaries and allowances. And they denied it, that they are not aware of those uh, uh, jumbo pay. So it became imperative now to look at the provisions of the constitution. What does it say? Yeah. Who does fix the salaries of public uh, uh, office holders? And it's found out that it is revenue mobilization. And I felt, okay, if revenue mobilization is the one that does that, they are now saying they are not the one that fixed the salary. Who, so who did? So what I did now was to join the National Assembly uh, uh, Service Commission also, whether they are the ones that did it. They all denied that they were not the one. They, 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 the Federal House of Red members also denied that they don't collect such amount of money. The Senate also says, so fine. Uh, if they all denied and the revenue mobilization said they are not the one that fixed what was let out, you know, by Senator Sunny, then I now want the court now to actually determine who should and then how much they should be earning. So that is actually the purpose of, uh, of going to court. So the court now look at the provisions of the law and came with the conclusion that it's only the revenue mobilization, uh, fiscal and allocation that's supposed to do the fixing of salaries and allowances of public office holders. And then uh, if they have been doing it uh, illegally, then from now onwards, uh, they should take over that responsibility that has already been assigned to them by the Constitution. Then the issue of reform. 
the court did not want to rely on the newspaper publication uh, in the allegation that I, that Senator as, as She Usani made. The court said that it is a newspaper publication which is clearly inadmissible in court. So they will not want to use that newspaper publication in the absence of any physical evidence of having uh, 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 having that evidence that they are collecting such an amount. So he will not make any any order as to reform. That was why the order for, for reform, because I also asked in part of my reliefs that the court should ask them to refund all the illegal monies they have been earning uh, from the Federation account. So the court said that they cannot rely on that newspaper publication. That was why the issue of reform was uh, uh, was actually not uh, upheld. It, will be, it might be easy to interpret it as, um, as maybe even stealing. If nobody has been able to agree that they are the ones who... Uh, set up the figures for their salaries in the last couple of years. It means that they were receiving, or very likely were receiving funds illegally without any approval from, uh, you know, the federal government and, you know, uh, in accordance with what the constitution says. So would you, you know, maybe call that stealing? Yeah, what, what, what the court did uh, say uh, is that if it is true that these people are receiving this money because he doesn't want to believe on the newspaper publication, if it's true, found out that, it, these guys have been receiving this money, but they have come to court to deny they are not receiving it. That he would rather want the Economic uh, uh, Financial Crime uh, Commission to come in into the matter and investigate and find out whether they have been earning these salaries, which they have now denied. And if it's true they have been earning it illegally, then they should uh, commence investigation and, and possible prosecution. That was actually, again, what the court uh, said in that judgment. So right. it is at that point, you know, that uh, we are living in. But we want to. Uh, praise for that. If it's a country that is actually uh, an honest country where things actually work, I think that EFCC also should be, it should come into this matter now, since they have formally denied that they are not receiving such a amount. But if it's one that they have been receiving such a amount, they are of course stealing. They have been taking this money legally because the person or the body that's supposed to fix their salaries and allowances is not the one that fix it. So the best thing is to actually ask them to refund or they will be prosecuted. That would be the right thing. But of course, you and I know that the kind of law we have in this country is only applicable to the poor people. It does not apply to the big people. Mm. But I think that that is not the way to go. And I believe, I believe that this time around, that this government of change will be right, will be want to, we want to do the right thing. After all of us have been crying, that we are paying so much to our public office so that, and we are leaving little for us to develop our fiscal infrastructure. Nigerians are not benefiting from the so-called uh, democracy we are practicing. You cannot afford, you know, decent accommodation there is no power, there is no you know, uh, good road, there is no ed good education, there is no even issue of uh, medical facilities in Nigeria. So why are we using the money we're supposed to use to develop Nigeria in paying few people? You know, and right. the majority are going to pay the, you know, empty. So yeah. it is important that this uh, matter be pressed to a logical conclusion. I need the, 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 the assistance of the press, I need the assistance of all well-meaning Nigerians and all, all stakeholders for us to get this you know, matter address, you know, gradually, you know, let's start from the uh, lawmakers, we move over to the executive, we move over to all other arms of government so that we can have a country uh, that uh, our children will be very proud of. For now, Nigerians are not smiling, and that is the truth. So, Mr. Obani, I really wonder why it's, it seems like such a big deal to determine the salaries of federal lawmakers, because even just to get a new job, you're asked to provide your pay slip. So why can't that also apply to the lawmakers if they're you know, claiming that they don't receive as much as 13 million naira like Sheikh Hussani had alleged one time? Also, what is the RMAFC saying in all of this? Well, as I said earlier, they came to court and they, um, I mean, they said that they, they are not aware of those uh, allowances that uh, is being claimed that they are, these people are earning and they are not the one that fix it. So that's why now, as I said earlier, I've now written a letter. So look, if you are not the one that fixed the salary, the court now has ordered you now to now fix salaries and allowances in accordance with economic reality. Maybe this is a starting point. But somebody has to, you know, and I did. You know, all of us have been over time, be crying. Nobody wants to, you know, take the the, 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 the pool by the by the all. So I decided to do this, you know. So as I said that I need the support of the government itself. Maybe what I should also do is to write to the president and then the minister of finance. These are the two key people I omitted. So I'm going to also write to them in order to bring to their knowledge this judgment, this latest judgment on this issue, so that they should take uh, notice and begin to apply uh, the law the way you ought to. That those bogus or jumbo pay is not clearly, clearly a reflection of our economic reality. And I, 
and it is not done in accordance with the constitution and then the body that's supposed to fix it is not the one that fix it so these are issues we know we need to so know, so uh, barista obani we know about nigerian politicians and how they basically disregard court orders if they do the same for this one and they go ahead collecting jumbo pay with the rmafc you know having a zero to, to zero input what then do you do next well i i will, I will go back to the same part where i got that judgment i said look uh, despite all this but you know let me just answer that it's important we get to know how much they are earning, which has always been very secret. It took only Sheh Usani to reveal it. And of course, they came to court and denied. But they didn't come to court with any evidence of any contrary, ev I mean, any contrary evidence, maybe with a pay slip. I say, look, if Sheh Usani says we're earning 13 million, we are earning one naira, two naira, look at the evidence of our pay slip. They didn't come to court with that. So as I said earlier, it must to take a probably higher authority or the economic financial or even ICPC for them to really know and get to their pay packet and say this is what these guys are earning and they are doing it contrary to the provisions of the law so that we can, I need to be helped because I couldn't collect the physical evidence myself while in court. And that is what also what the court said that what I was lying upon was only newspaper publication. You know, that I needed more physical evidence to show to the court. But how do I do that when, proof when I'm not a member of the House and none of them will be willing to give you their paper case, you know? In order that that, to that was that was my question earlier, Mr. Um, Barista Obani. Can they be petitioned to actually, you know, produce their pay slip as evidence of what they earn? Yes, that, that, the, the right thing is when economic uh, uh, financial crime, you know, uh, does come into the investigation, uh, when they when they, they when they do that, then I think that that information will certainly be out because they cannot hide it anymore. That yeah. is the truth. Uh, all right, Mr. Abani, I know it's not necessarily your um, office, um, but what you know would you suggest? You know, what range of salary and allowances would you uh, suggest that a Nigerian lawmaker, a National Assembly member, should should receive? Uh, taking a close look at our economic realities, like you've mentioned. My brother, you know what? How much civil servants are earning now? Uh, it's thirty thousand naira minimum pay. Yes. I, I, I should think that our house, uh, uh, this thing should even be part time. I mean, their responsibility should be part time. They shouldn't be any more than maybe maybe one million naira a month, or if that, with all the allowances uh, inclusive. And of course, you know, you know the situation of uh, things in the country where, as I said earlier, people go to bed. You know, with not even guaranteed of one square meal. But here we are with people earning so much, you know. So I would recommend maybe just a a million naira, you know, all, all inclusive, includes both basic area and the allowances. That would be my own. It's that includes that, their newspaper allowances and their wardrobe allowances and their yeah, allowances based on for their aids. Reality, yes. Yes. Based on the economic reality, one million is. A, I mean, how many how many bank workers? How many uh, this in end up to one million in a in a month? You know. Okay. So by the point is that they are our lawmakers, so, and they live in Abuja where things are very expensive. So I would recommend one million. All right, so Barisalbani, how do you think, you know, the RMA, RMAFC coming in to determine the salaries of lawmakers and then slashing it down to as minimal as it should be, how do you think that would, you know, make government unattractive people to people or for people who simply are there for the money? The point is that if you really want to have free, uh, fair, and credible election in Nigeria, we must start with the perks of office, what these guys and when they get into office, starting even with the governors. These guys have what you call unhindered assets to our treasury. The governors and some of any governor, three months, they become billionaires because they have un unhindered assets. Our institutions are very weak. So if you really want to have credible election in Nigeria, let's start with dealing with what these guys get when they get into public office. The moment you don't address that issue, these guys will keep on, you know, uh, disturbing our electoral process. They will keep on, you know, ensuring that it is too, 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 uh, uh, for you to get in, it will be too stressful. You have to kill, you have to maim, you have to make sure that you, you you clear anyone on the way in order for you to get into the office, knowing fully well what is available there. And that is, if you go to, you, of course, you have watched American election, you also watch a UK election. There is no much uh, uh, trouble. People just from the office walk into their polling booth and vote. And, and people who contest offices are doing well in their private business and they want to come, you know, and they speak what they have uh, achieved in their private, you know, private business in public office. But here, somebody has no beginning, has no second address, comes in and become a multi-billionaire and doesn't have any industry. 
Meanwhile, he's rated as one of the richest men in Nigeria. No industry, only from the public treasury. So I think when we really define what people should earn, you know, and then uh, make it to be uh, something unattractive, I tell you that the best hands in this country will begin to enter into politics in order That's to, all. you know, govern Nigeria the way Nigeria is supposed to be. We're supposed to be running and not crawling. We're crawling. That's and why we're crawling is that we keep on, you know, sending our second 11 or even third 11 to go and represent us. But the first 11 do not have the resources for them to come into power. They don't have the money. And it's, here is money politics. So why can't we now redefine, you know, our politics? I'm very happy with what I hear this morning about uh, uh, Soludo Imagine as a, as a, as a candidate of Abga. You know, this is the kind of people we should be presenting for public office. You know, people who have antecedent. You know, people who have, you know, you know, character. People who have, you know, have managed public office or private office and you see what they have achieved. We should be presenting our first 11. And I'm not surprised with Anambra. And I'm, I will not be surprised if he eventually emerges as the governor uh, of Anambra State. They have always gotten it right in this Eastern region. But when it comes to uh, leadership in the Abia State, you know, Abia of all states, you know, we have always been presenting our worst 11, you know, uh, to, to, to go and help this. And that's why we are where we are today. We have not made progress as a state. So I think that all over the country, let the electorate begin to have a mindset that we must redeem this country. And those who have antecedent, those who have character, those who have competence, those who are patriotic enough should be the ones who will be sending to the houses of assembly, to send it to the executive, send it to the judiciary, you know, so that we will have a country all of us shall be very proud of, you know. So that's what I think. All right, uh, Mr. Barney, it, it's, it's um, of course, a nice you know, place to start from. Hopefully, the web catches on, you know, like you've said, the governors, the state house of assembly members, the presidency, and, you know, and everyone who is in a, a lawmaking position across uh, the country. Um, I believe that, you know, this conversation also includes the number of aides and the number of vehicles and patrol vehicles and police personnel that are attached to these people because these are all... <laughs> so part of the things that, uh, you know, make the National Assembly cost Nigeria billions of naira every year. Um, so, so how fast do you think that this web will catch up on, you know, every other uh, government office, uh, including, of course, yeah, state yeah, governors, yeah. like you've I, mentioned? I, I think we should start from somewhere. You know, leadership is very key. Everything rises and falls with leadership. The moment we get the kind of leader we all desire in this country, you will see that all these things will begin to fall in line. When we have people who are not going there to go and steal, you know, they are not interested in the money, but what they want to do is to go and render service. You start from the head. If you have a president that really want to, you know, run this country in such a manner that we begin to, you know, free the money that we, you know, use in paying few people to develop our basic infrastructure, it will start with even with the, with the security vote. I've said it before. That security vote has no legal basis. It has no legal backing. But monies are being taken some governors take up to one billion every month as security vote meanwhile we're not secure then they take so much money from the local government money when the money comes into the joint account they they give them money to go and pay salary some money to go and pay salary meanwhile they will ask them to sign that they have received the full money meanwhile the money will not be given to the local government chairman in order to go and develop their local government accounts. so we have issues with that we have issue of award of contract there is no standard the law is not being, you know, complied with on the issue of tender. You know, you know, people will just use one billion in order to build one kilometer. Another person will use ten billion. So there is no uniform standard and all that. It just are their whims and caprices. So I think that any government that is serious in the leadership will begin to correct all these things one after the other. And when we really emphasize the issue of money in politics, you know, I can assure you that the people that are competent will begin to emerge. We have so many competent men who are doing so well in their private companies, but they cannot come you know, into public service because the kind of money they have to spend in order for them to win election. And secondly, their lives also will be at risk because of the money that is, you know, being made, that is available. There is, this, there is just so much desperation in the entire process. And that's why we cannot even guarantee credibility in our electoral process because those who want to come in are ready to do all manner of things in order to win election because of the money that is available. So let's now begin to emphasize the perks of office. Let's begin to pay people what they are worth and then encourage the best hands to come into politics. All right, and Mr. I think Bani. that we can only start with leadership. You know, uh, if you have the correct kind of leadership in this country, I can assure you, you look at you guys doing so well in your, in your profession, intelligent, but you may not have the money now to enter into politics. You can be a governor in your state, you know, knowing the kind of intelligence you have, including the lady. She can be a, a, a member of the House, but you don't have the resources for you to win an election in your state.
All right, Monde Obani, thank you so much for you know, your service and for also speaking with us this morning. We look forward to, of course, more of these conversations and uh, um, you know, better Nigeria. Yes, thank you. And we can't stop congratulating you on the landmark ruling. Have a great day. Thank you very much. I'm so grateful. God bless you guys. You're welcome. God bless you too. And Ananta, of course, can be a governor in her state. Uh, yes, Edo 2023. <laughs> All right, Thank you guys morning. for joining us this morning. My name is Annetta Felix. Remember the name for the next few years for the elections? Remember what? No? The names for the elections. <laughs> Mr. Monday Obani really gave me ideas and I'm running with it. 2023, Annetta Felix, uh -huh. Edo State Governorship Election. Yes. Or party? Annetta People's Party, APP. <laughs> that could work. Stay with us, all right? Nine o'clock, the news uh, brief comes your way. I am Osaogi Ogbonwa. Cheers.